or reading from the book of Sarai, wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight, the vengeful suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, for your sins will be forgiven. But if anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord, could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay. And cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the most high of the covenant and overlook the faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
So here's some, something important to keep in mind. Anger, anger, as purely an emotion and a reaction to something is not a sin, right? We know, we, we know it's one of the seven deadly, so what are we talking about? Remember, even Jesus Christ turned over tables in the marketplace. Anger, emotional anger in reaction to an injustice is not in and of itself a sin. So when does it become sinful? It becomes sinful when we hug it tight, when we hold on to it until it festers, festers inside us. Scripture today says, well, let it go. Let it go. Easier said than done, right? And it sounds good, as I said, on paper, on theory. We do want to forgive because that's what Christians want. That's what Christians should do. We should forgive and love everybody, except my sister. <laughs> because she really has a problem. And Jesus didn't mean her when he was talking about this. We all have that sister-in-law, cousin, friend, aunt. We all have somebody like that. Yeah, we should forgive, but not this one. And why not? Why not? Because the person doesn't deserve it. Right? The person doesn't deserve it. And we're not going to let him or her off the hook. We've all been offended. We've all been offended. We can think of those offenses. We can dredge them, dredge them up. Sometimes they've been big offenses, sometimes small. Sometimes it's been a one-shot deal. Sometimes it's over time, something that gets under our skin. Sometimes it's something very personal against us. Sometimes it's kind of a general thing that we're angry at. Sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes a person doesn't even know he's offending, although he should. But by holding on, we give that person what he deserves. We withhold from him our goodwill. We withhold from her our love. And maybe maybe we mix in a little bit of hate. A little bit of hate. I was tempted to say, oh no, not me, I don't hate anybody. But if love is wanting the best for the other person, not talking about an emotion, right? If love is wanting the best for the other person, then what is hate? Wanting that person to get his. A little bit of hate mixed in. We like to talk about that villain to other people. Kind of win them over to our side, don't we? You know what she did? You know what he said? Win people over into our camp. Because it's what they deserve. But we as Christians are baptized into Christ. We are baptized into Christ to live Christ. And Christ did not come to give us what we deserve. He did not. He came to give us mercy. He came to give us the best thing that we could get. That's why Christ came. And we are Christ on earth. His hands, his feet, his mouth, his face. Every time I preach about uh, forgiveness, I have to bring up this book that I read. It was big a few years ago, The Shack. Right? You remember that book, The Shack? And there's this great image, right? This guy, this guy is in the kitchen with God. And God is in this, this particular scene, pictured as a matronly person. They're in the kitchen, they're cooking. And God, she, turns to him and says, Forgiveness is taking your hands off the other person's throat. That's a nice image of forgiveness. Taking your hands off the other person's now I know you say, wait, Father, I have to forgive, really? I can't. I try, I can't forgive. I can't forgive. Well, maybe we just have to clarify what forgiveness is. What forgiveness is. Let me say first thing what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not saying it's okay. That's not forgiveness. Because if somebody hurts us, if somebody does something wrong, that is not okay. And those offenses and 
sin and sin is still could have an effect in the world. So it's not saying it's okay. It's even acknowledging that that was not okay. But, and there's the but, but we're going to move beyond that. So you say, well, Father, I can't shake the anger. Every time I think of this person, this thing, this event, I feel the anger. Christian love is an act of the will, not an act of emotion. We decide that we want the best for the other person. Even if our heart is screaming, no, 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 not her, not him. We decide we want the best for the other person. We consciously take our hands off the throat. We decide to forgive. And how do we do that? Always my advice there is to pray. To pray. Pray for that person. Pray for that person. Pray that God help that person in all the ways that that person needs God's help. And decide to love. Decide to want the best for the other. We can't stop our blood from boiling with the flick of a switch. We can't. We're not machines. We're human. But we decide to forgive. Now you might be thinking, well, you're saying that I have to move past this and take that person back like it was before? No, I'm not saying that. That's your decision. Moving past does not mean going back. Moving past does not mean going back. Whether or not you want to renew or continue that relationship is a matter of discernment. We can forgive and make a decision that a relationship has run its course and move on. We can do that. Or we can forgive and decide that trust can be rebuilt. Or we can forgive and decide that we do want to go back the way it was before and simply put this aside. But we can't make that decision with our hands on somebody's neck. Because then it's our boiling blood that is speaking. And not our Christian soul. Not even our mind. Can a past offense be overcome? Can trust be rebuilt? Yeah, sometimes. That takes a certain. But to follow Christ, to follow Christ, we cannot be mastered by dark emotion. We cannot focus on what he deserves. It's true. Sometimes there are consequences to an offense. But where can we show mercy? Where can we show mercy in our lives? Sometimes that mercy just starts with a decision, a decision not to hate. Start with God. God is the source of all good. So we start there, we pray for ourselves. Good Lord, give me the strength the grace to step away from hatred and anger, to stop hugging them tight to myself. And Lord, I pray for this other person as I pray for myself. Please help us in all the ways that we need your help to follow you more closely. We are people of free will. People of free will if we exercise it. And we can decide the kind of person we want to be. Sometimes there's a lot of stuff that we cannot decide, things beyond our control. But we can pretty much always decide the kind of person we want to be. Do we want to be the face of Christ? If we do, we can't let boil 